G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another VB.net 2013 video. We are going to go through XAML today. I'm going to explain to you what it is, how to use it, and show you a couple of examples. Now this video, I'm hoping to keep it about 15 minutes long. It may go a bit beyond that because XAML is quite complicated and it's got a lot to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain it in the simplest ways I can, give you a couple of examples of it as I said, and then down in the description of the video is I'm going to give you some further readings to go on and explore XAML in a lot more detail because it is quite powerful and quite useful. So first of all, if you missed the last couple of videos I've did and I was probably wondering what XAML actually stands for, it stands for Extensible Application Meta Language. It basically is you being able to design your forms through the use of just text. All right, So you can type up all the commands to design your interface quite quickly. It's entirely separate from coding okay which is under your XAML VB file but under the XAML file is where you find all of the code for your interface now this came into life about Visual Studio 2008 okay it's supported from the frame, .NET Framework 3 and above and it goes all the way back I'm oh, sorry this is WPF as well but it goes all the way back to Windows XP but they need to uh, install some extra libraries for that one Windows Vista natively supports it all the way up to Windows 8.1 and 10 as you can probably imagine. Now the good thing about XAML is it's not only just supported in Windows W oh, sorry, Visual Basic WPF applications but it's also Expression Studio, Blend for Visual Studio, Silverlight and Windows Apps. Now when I say Windows Apps uh, another way of saying it would be uh, the modern applications that were out, the universal apps for Windows, Windows Phone applications, they're all called Windows apps now. Microsoft recently changed the term. Okay, and the benefit of it as well is it looks like HTML or XML. So if anybody has ever used those kind of things before, it's really simple to pick up and start learning. Now, if you don't know HTML, that's good because I'm going to explain that for the next couple of minutes. If you know HTML or XML and you've worked with it for a while, click on the annotation that just popped up on the screen, skip that part because I'm going to go through the basics and the terminology before I do anything else. Now down here you've got your design window at the top and down here I just repeated myself is the XAML window. If we're going to be working in XAML a lot more prominently than the design, what you are going to want to do is swap these screens over. Okay, So on the top you've got design, on the bottom you've got XAML. If you click the arrows it flips that over. I can zoom in and you can see that a lot easier. Okay. So, in fact, you can hide that entirely, but it's entirely up to you. I like to have the design down here so I can see what's happening with my window and the XAML a little bit more prominent. To be honest, I'm actually going to use XAML a lot more in my modern applications. So, first of all, let's go through the very basics. Okay, You can type in here to create controls or objects on your form without having to drag and drop any of the things you saw in the previous videos. It makes things a lot more streamlined, it makes things a lot easier to do, and a lot easier to see what you're working with, to be honest. And it makes things, I think it's a lot quicker than having to drag and drop. But let's go through some of the key words that you're going to have to learn when you're using XAML. The first thing are these mauve colored words. These are your controls. So you can see when I click on window, it highlights the window, and when I click on grid, it highlights the grid. So whenever you see one of these diamond brackets open and closed, that's known as a tag. Okay, and every single tag has an open and a closing tag. Okay, it's really important that you understand that every tag does have an open and a close. It is possible to open and close a tag on one line, and I'll show you that in a moment, but it must have an opening and it must have a closing. And you'll also notice that window starts here, and grid starts here, but then grid closes first and window closes last. What that concept is called is a first in, last out concept. Because a window contains a grid, and then a grid might contain buttons and text boxes and things of that nature, Okay, you open them and then you close them in the exact opposite order in which you open them. So thus, the first in, last out premise. Okay. Just keep that in your mind and things will be quite easy. The next term is called an attribute. It's also known as a property. But essentially these red words here, these keywords, are your attributes. Okay, And they allow you to change 
the properties of your window, your grid, your buttons, and things like that. So where it says title equals main window, we are literally changing the title of the window. So I can just type in here, hello world, and you'll see down now design that hello world is already updated for us in the window object. You can also change the height and the width of this form if you really feel like it. We'll do that later. But essentially their attributes. And that's pretty much all the keywords to begin with. A couple of things that you need to remember is that it is case sensitive. So grid should have a capital G on it. Title should have a capital T. Window should have a capital W on it. Okay, so keep that in mind. It should have a capital and the rest should be lower case. Okay, the next thing that you should really look at is the fact that some of these things start with X colon. What that is, is that's a shorthand for Microsoft's namespace or their schema all right so right here you see xl l and s so the xml namespace shorthand to x equals this okay and what a schema is a schema is basically a blueprint for the data that's going to be represented so if you want more information on schemas because that's not in the scope of this video I've included that down in the description. Click on that, and it's going to take you to a wiki page. I promise you it's the simple wiki page, so it's a simple explanation about what a schema is. If you need more information, I'd suggest you start Googling and start wondering what the hell is going on. Okay, let's start doing some Xanil, okay? I've talked enough about the concepts and the keywords. I'm first of all going to get rid of Grid because he's going to come around. He's a little bit more complicated. I'm going to start with what's called a stack panel, okay? So let's do that again. The way I create an object is I open up a diamond and you start typing in the name of what object or what control you want to add. I want to add in a stack panel, just like that. So I typed in the word stack and I pressed enter to finish typing it in. If I close off the diamond, you can see that it's automatically added in the closing tag. If I press enter, it pushes it down the extra line. It indents my cursor and ready to start adding the objects within my stack panel. Now because I didn't specify the height or the width of my stack panel, you can see that it's highlighted, well it's created a stack panel that covers the entire height and width of my form. And now when I start adding in objects, I do it the exact same way I added the stack panel. So let's say I want to add a text box. You open up a diamond, you type in text box, and you close it off. And there's my text box down the bottom. By default, it sets up the font size, the alignment, the height, and the width, and things like that. If I wanted to change, say, the font size, okay, I literally would just press space after text box, and I get all the properties and events listed in there. So, for example, you'll also see these curly braces, I should say. These are called collections, okay? And I'm not going to deal with collections in this video, but have a look at them in your own time. So, font. if I type in font size, it automatically comes up. Notice I didn't capitalize anything, but if I press equals, it automatically capitalizes and it automatically puts in the string quotes for me. So let's say the font size is 16. You'll see that the text box just increased in size. That's because the, it's trying to match the font size. And if I want to add some words inside my text box, I'll do it in between my tags for opening and closing the text box. And there it is. Just typing in what's doing in between the diamonds or the tags puts it inside the text box. Okay, let's say I want to add the next control, which is a button. So again, open up for a button, press enter, and I'll open and close it. And you can see the button's there, but it's got no height to it because there's no text. So to add text to it, you just start typing it in. And there it is. You'll also notice with the stack panel, it adds everything in rows. So everything's sort of vertically aligned. Now, let's say I don't want these objects to touch each other like that. They're really, that sounded wrong, but anyway, they're really, really close together. So what you want to do is you want to add a margin around some of your objects. And it's just a property. Again, you type in margin, put it equals. And if I type in five, what I'm saying is I want five pixels at the top, the left, the right, and the bottom of the object. And you can see it's added a gap around the entire size. You'll even see it says five, which indicates that it's got a margin of five, okay? I can specify the top, bottom, left, and right margins by specifying different values. 
just like so, all right? So the left is 10, okay? The top is 15, the right is 20, and the bottom is 25. So it goes around clockwise in that order, okay? I'm just gonna change that back to five. I'm gonna add some for my button. I'm gonna say the margin equals five, okay? Just so everything's sort of spaced out a little bit more. All right, the next object I'm gonna add quickly, or control is an, oh my God, an image. Okay, right now it's got no height because there is no image inside of the box. An image is added through the source property. However, we don't have any images in our application. So to add an image, the easiest way I've found is just to add it to your application first and then set the source property. So to do that, I'm going to quickly right click on my prop, <coughs> excuse me, my project up here. I'm going to click add and I'm going to select existing item. You're going to have to change to image files on the type. I'm going to go to my pictures. Here's one right there. And it's just added the desktop.png. Sorry, everyone. I've had a cold, so I'm struggling with that a little bit. Anyway, so if I quick source and then I type in desktop.png, bang, there it is. It's added in the source image quite easily. You'll notice it takes up the entire space of the application, so it's taking up the rest of the space that it possibly can. So if I want to reduce that in size, I can actually specify the height. So let's say I only want it to take up 50 pixels, then you can specify 50 pixels. If you want more, you can just add in a larger number. And there you see the image is taking up a larger space. All right, so that's how you do images. So let's go into the last one, and then we're gonna talk about events in XAML. So let's add in a checkbox. They're pretty common. And let's add in a first. Let's scroll down here so you can see it happening. There it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this whole line and paste it below. Okay. And the way I quickly do that, if you've never watched my other videos before, you just put the cursor on the line you want to copy. You press Control C and then Control V straight away. And Studio does the rest. All right. So all that done, if I just press play, I have a number of controls. They behave the way you would expect them to. There's a button, you can click on him, he doesn't do anything. There's an image, he doesn't do much as well. And checkboxes behave the way you would expect them to. Okay, so using XAML, it's really quick and easy to add in controls without having to drag and drop them and resize them and change the properties on the right. It's quite easy just to do it in the text. All right. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of code in here. Now, realistically, if you're going to code objects, you want to name them. Now, in the past, I've named them over here on the right-hand side, but we can do it here in XAML as you would expect we are, are able to. Sorry. So, if I want to name my first checkbox, you best off whoop, starting with the X colon and then go to name. Okay? Without the X, you can actually leave out the X colon. It doesn't make a big difference, but it's good practice to keep that in there. Okay? Because name is a part of Microsoft's namespace. Okay? So, to name my checkbox, it's good to start with CHK for checkboxes. Excuse me. And then typing it the name of what it is. So check first, adds the name, and you can see it's added here in the properties panel, my first checkbox. I'm going to copy that, paste, paste. It's whinging because check first already exists. So we're going to rename this guy to check second and check third. So that's how quickly we can name all three of our objects, just by copying and pasting the name of it. Okay, it is time to add some code. So what we're going to do with these checkboxes is when we click on them, we're just going to have a message box come up and say, hello. So we know that we've clicked on it. So there's a couple of ways you can add events to objects in XAML. The first way I'm going to show you is by adding in your own sub. So let's say, for instance, I create a sub called checkbox click. I want my capitals there. And I'm just going to do a quick message box, hello like so. Alright, so the way you're going to quickly add in your event is again it's a property or an attribute of your checkbox. So I'm going to go click and you'll see it's got the little lightning bolt to indicate that it's an event. If I press equals we get a number of different options here. We get initialize component which we don't want. We get 
the sub that we wrote, and this one we're going to deal with in a sec. But I'm just going to use checkbox click, and I'm going to copy it for all three checkboxes. So when I start my program, they're all going to work on the same code. So look, if I'm going too quickly for you people, make sure you pause the video and then catch up. So for right now, let's start. So every time I click any of these three checkboxes, the code is going to execute. Now the question is, how do we differentiate between the first, the second, and the third checkbox when they're clicked on? Because it's using the same code. Okay. Right now, there is no way to distinguish it. What we have to do is add in the parameters for our click event. Now, because I've been programming for quite some time, I remember them off the top of my head. It's entirely up to you what you have to do. The first one is the sender as an object. The second one is E as routed event args, or arguments for short. Okay. What they basically are is E is special properties about what actually happened when the event was triggered. Okay. For example, when you do a mouse over, it tells you the X and Y position of the mouse and what key, so sorry, what button, the left or the right or the middle, was used to click on it. Okay. So, and this sender object here is what control actually sent us to this code. So, to explicitly tell you that, I'm going to message box sender dot content. Now, content is the text that appears inside a checkbox. So, if I press play. First, second, third. As simple as that. All right. Now, for example, say this is not exactly code I'm going to be using later on in the video, so I'm going to get rid of this code for the moment. I'm going to delete it, and I'm going to create a whole heap of errors for myself. And that's because my XAML is still referring to the sub. I have to get rid of that if I want to be able to run my program again. Otherwise, you're going to give yourself some errors. Now, if I try and start, it should be good to go. If you get any errors, and it says this code was um, changed outside the source or outside the scope, just tell it to reload the uh, source. That's fine. All right. Anyway, that aside, realistically, the code I'm going to add is under the button. When we click on the button, we're just going to check what the checkboxes, which ones are checked. Wow, that was a terrible sentence. We're going to check which checkboxes are ticked. That sounds much better. Okay, so for the button, I'm just going to do the same attribute, click equals, but this time I'm going to say new event handler, and you're going to see it's going to create that for us. And what it's done, there it is. It's added a sub, it's automatically added in the event and the arguments that we need. And what we're going to do is we're going to build up a string based on what checkboxes have been ticked. So dim result as a string, okay. And we're going to do quick if statements here, people. If check first is checked, then result equals first. And I'm going to put a comma just in case the second one is checked as well. And then we're going to go if second. So you can see if I didn't name these checkboxes, I wouldn't be able to use them in code. All right. Second, you can see I'm building the string by the ampersand. And the reason it's saying there might be a warning here is because I'm saying if result doesn't equal first and we're trying to add on to an empty string, you're best off doing that at the beginning to get rid of that warning. Is checked results third. Now I do understand that if we check if we tick the first and the second checkbox, then it's going to say first, second, and it's going to have a comma after it. To be completely honest, I don't care. It's just an example. Excuse me. All right, there's my code. To create a result, if the first one's ticked, add first. If the second one, yep. If the third one, yep. And then message box it. Start her up. Let's tick the first and the third. And there it is. Tick, tick, tick. First, second, third. All right. So I'm going to stop the video here, everybody, because I think it's gone on long enough. That's, ex that's our XAML example. In the next video, I'm going to extend on this and we're going to look at the grid object and how to use the XAML for the grid. It's pretty important, so we're going to focus on that one. There's going to be very little coding. In fact, there's probably going to be no coding. It's just going to be all XAML in the next video. But thank you for watching in this one, everybody. Can you like, subscribe and comment down the bottom? I'd love to hear from you and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.